Okay, so I want to make a short video, and a short video straight to the point, so it's got everything in you need for, for IV. Okay, so we're just going to look at inspiration, expiration, or inhalation and exhalation, as you can see on the diagram here. Sometimes when we think about breathing in, we think that we actually suck the air in through our mouth and our nose, and that's not actually the case. The process starts down here. This is called the diaphragm, and it's a muscle that lines the bottom of the thoracic cavity. Remember, this is the thoracic cavity. It contains the lungs and the heart, the sternum, and all of the ribs. They're the outsides of the, uh, the protective layer of the thoracic cavity. So the diaphragm contracts, and it moves down. Okay, you can see here it's in its relaxed position, but here it's trying to flatten. Okay, it moves downwards, and that pulls, because it's all connected with connective tissue, it pulls the thoracic cavity downwards, and it sort of stretches the lungs downwards. At the same time, you have muscles in between each of the ribs here that are called intercostal muscles. They contract, they pull the ribs together. Each of them pull the ribs together, but they actually pull the whole rib cage upwards and outwards. That then makes the volume of the thoracic cavity much bigger, pulling down on the diaphragm, moving the rib cage up and out, it sort of stretches the thoracic cavity. That then decreases the pressure, and because there's a decrease in pressure, air is sucked in. Um, through all of the air passages down into the lungs to, to try and equal that pressure. When we expire air, or when we breathe out, then the opposite happens. The diaphragm relaxes, and you can see here it goes into this end shape, this curved shape. The intercostals mu intercostal muscles relax, and the ribs move down and in. Both of the, the combination of those two things forces pressure on the outsides of the lungs, so it's pushing this way, and it's pushing this way, that forces the volume inside the lungs to decrease and therefore pushes the air out. And that's the basic breathing mechanism. Uh, and and it, is, it is that simple and that's what you need to know um, right now. When we exercise, and when we exercise hard, we have other muscles that assist. We have external intercostal muscles, so when we breathe in, when we need to take deep breaths, then we have other muscles that sort of lay here a little bit further down and they sort of point in and downwards and they um, they give greater force to to lift and to pull out the ribs making the thoracic cavity bigger okay and the diaphragm with exercise that can strengthen as well and that can pull harder and further down when we expire and this is quite an easy one to do um, it's actually our abdominal muscles and our um, sort of oblique muscles so if you sit there and you put your hands on on your uh, abdominals and the side of your abdominals called the obliques, these muscles down at the side. If you forcibly breathe out as hard as you can, then you can actually feel those muscles contracting. Um, when we're breathing in as well during exercise, we also have a muscle in the neck called the sternocleidomastoid. There are two, one on each side, and they also pull um, the, the rib cage up. So they are extra muscles that you need to know about. The sternocleidomastoid, the external intercostal muscles uh, for inspiration or inhalation and then for expiration it's predominantly the, the abdominal muscles and the obliques so the abdominal muscles lie here and the obliques, the abdominal muscles contract and force the diaphragm higher up as do the obliques, they force the di diaphragm higher up and that forces air out. The second thing I'd like to look at is the, uh, the gas exchange and it's really simple, I think some of you are complicating a little bit after watching a couple of the videos, so I'll try and make it really simple. Basically, we have deoxygenated blood that comes from the, the muscle cells, so that goes back to the heart, and then the heart has to pump it to the lungs so it can get more oxygen. So this blood here, it's been around the body, it dropped off the oxygen, it's gone back to the heart, and now the heart's pumped it to the alveoli sac, and this is the alveoli sac here. So the deoxygenated, the purple blood, and you can see purple blood in the veins and your hands and things, that basically means it's delivered its oxygen, it's deoxygenated now. Um, so these these haemoglobin um, molecules here, or haemoglobin cells rather, um, they don't have any, any oxygen. In the plasma, in between them, in the fluid in between, and there's a lot of carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide goes in, the oxygen as we can see moves into the red blood cells, into the haemoglobin, it bonds with the haemoglobin, and then off it goes. And it goes back to the heart, ready to be pumped around the body again. The carbon dioxide that's remaining in here, as we expire, so as the pressure on the um, thoracic cavity increases, 
the diaphragm pushes up, the intercostal muscles relax and the ribcage moves down. That, that squeezes on the outside of the air sac, on the outside of the alveoli, all around the lungs, and that forces the air out, therefore getting rid of um, a lot of the carbon dioxide. When we breathe in, remember this all, this all stretches, lots of air rushes in, 20% oxygen goes into the blood. When we breathe out, we've absorbed 4% of that oxygen that we've taken in. We've actually removed 4% carbon dioxide from the, from the plasma. So the carbon dioxide goes out then when we breathe out, as I said, and the oxygen. We breathe out some of the oxygen as well. And again, that's as simple as you need. The only more advanced things you might need to know is why carbon dioxide moves from here into here and why oxygen moves from here into here. It's just about equilibrium. There's no oxygen here, but there's lots here. So naturally, the, the gas molecules want to even out. They want to move from here, from the alveolar sac, into the blood to, to sort of even out. And because there's very little carbon dioxide in here, but there's lots in the plasma, in the blood plasma, the carbon dioxide wants to move here. So it diffuses, it moves through these walls here, these semi-permeable walls, diffuses into here and moves out whereas the oxygen diffuses uh, through the walls here into the hemoglobin uh, to maintain the equilibrium. And that's pretty much it.